people's community. We are supposed to be a good community. But before I get into that subject, I just want to let you know uh, something that you've already seen. I've uh, announced the uh, advisory council from now on because, um, of course, I don't think that I'm the smartest, the, uh, the most intelligent person on the face of the earth. And I don't think that all my ideas are the best or that I'm just God-given, God-given gift to everyone that I know everything for everyone and in every situation. Advisory council is always there to, uh, indeed, be it's made up of individuals who are trustworthy who are dedicated to service and people who have some experience in life or a rich spiritual experience so that they could you know give some proper counseling and and, and a proper judgment about things in that way by announcing it uh, I have also proven yet once again the lie being spread about hope of Israel worldwide Church of God that it has no Philadelphia style government well on the contrary my dear friends very much of the contrary we are f we are treading on the footsteps of our predecessor the man whom we inherited and we inherited so much knowledge wisdom and everything else from him from Herbert Armstrong and uh, Herbert Armstrong used to have an advisory council I think and also there were board of trustees for the ambassador college and all kinds of uh, various boards of people who were trustworthy and were there to make the work uh, to help the work, to ins inspire the work, and to basically uh, facilitate the work of God around the world. Uh, again, Mr. Armstrong was the one who loved to delegate various uh, duties. As far as I remember from various testimonies, he was a man who would ask usually uh, everyone, you know, from from cook to driver to anybody about their opinions he loved to communicate he was very communicative he would communicate with people he was very open-minded and uh, i remember his announcement when he <laughs> he said when a lady a lady called him and or sent him a message uh, when he was on the radio back in those days and uh, she said to him, well, how could you claim to proclaim the whole gospel when one third of the Bible you do not preach? What is that one third of the Bible? He said, he asked, well, it is about the identity of the house of Israel, she said. It's about the prophecies in the Bible. So he said, really, when he looked up, looked it up, it was one third of the Bible and he didn't really preach it. <laughs> So he was open-minded, he repented of that, and uh, as you know, here we are. So he was a man very communicative, very open-minded, very very approachable person. He loved to communicate with people and uh, hear their opinion. I I think I'm about, I'm, I think I'm the same. I love to communicate with people. I love to hear your input. I love to hear where you come from. I love to hear what the problems you might be faced with. I love to hear everything that is relevant because this is the work of God on a worldwide scale that's why we are hope of Israel worldwide Church of God because God's scattered Israel to all the nations as well so therefore uh, naming the advisory council was I felt a good move I didn't have to do it really but uh, again I thought uh, yet to give yet another another blow to the falsities that some people spread around uh, spread about us and they spread it about us because they're obviously afraid they're obviously afraid of Sorry, I didn't uh, check. Well, wait a second. There is so Mr. Armstrong was a very communicative person, uh, and I wanted to give a blow to once again to these unfounded and stupid accusation of those who don't really know us, but they're obviously afraid of us. Uh, the uh, I wanted to give a blow to that that we are not a we don't have a Philadelphian structure of governance and therefore we can not be a Philadelphian remnant. Well, I'm very sorry to inform them that we are a we all want to be a Philadelphian remnant. We'll do all our best to be a Philadelphian remnant. And now uh, the Hope of Israel does have an advisory council, just like Mr. Armstrong, the man whom God used to do his work uh, and to start the Philadelphia era in the last century. Uh, which lasted from 1933 to 1986 to his death we are having now the advisory council based uh, you know based basically on uh, the way how he structured it led by god how he structured the governance in the church of god uh, there was one thing that uh, in my last inaugural speech i forgot to mention and the serbian congregation wanted me to mention it and i'll mention it to you speaking of those who claim 
to be uh, having Philadelphian governance. Uh, let me just tell you that the Serbian members, by their own, on their own, they have discovered, for example, that the um, in our former church affiliation, a person who is in charge for Africa had four uh, Facebook profiles. In each profile, there was a different year of his birth. You know, when one profile would be 74, in another profile would be something else. So, what kind of an evangelist do you have to ask yourself? What kind of an honest and true evangelist and a true man of God would have four Facebook accounts? Uh, similar later, we discovered when this group with those 27 and or so congregations that uh, came rushing to us and tried to convince Terry and I that they're just so dedicated and devoted now to the hope of Israel. Oh, we're not suckers. And the flatteries will not win us. And we are very, very, very alert when it comes to Kenya, of course. Those are 27 Kenyan. Then we discovered, of course, that the, uh, the, the leader whom they wanted also had uh, two Facebook profiles or, uh, you know, and that's what people sadly do. Uh, why would somebody have a multiple, multiple profiles? Well, obviously, it will be only somebody who wants to scam you or somebody who, and mind you, four profiles in the case of the famous evangelist, whose name I don't need to tell you, you know what it is, uh, with different years of years of birth. Uh, since he was caught also in, in, in an adulterous affair and on a site that is used for adulteries, I guess perhaps he used different uh, different years Perhaps for those purposes, you never know. But in any case, a person with such, uh, with such four, uh, uh, with four, you know, accounts, different accounts, obviously something is wrong with that person, and that person already is certainly not doing something that is right, and that person certainly, dear friends, is disqualified from, from being in any proper governments, governance. But that's just a thing that Serbian congregation discovered by itself and wanted me to tell you that as well and I forgot last Sabbath as I spoke about as I gave my inaugural speech it was unusually long it's true because I have no notes I had no notes that I was uh, when I was delivering that speech and I was going to address all of you uh, sincerely from the heart the way that I think is the best so yes it lasted four year four hours but I would just appreciate if you would if you could not perhaps listen it all at once, but you can just listen it one by one, you know, at certain at certain different times, I would appreciate if you would hear it, because I've uh, done my best to address some burning issues, and I've done my best to respond to the very uh, unfounded accusations. Obviously, there is a fear from Hope of Israel, but anyway, by the way, with those 27 congregations, we have uh, cut off and severed all the all of our all of our connections uh, because we've caught the main man trying to control how and what we do in in uh, in the country of Malawi uh, now Terry Nelson sometimes sends some of his personal funds to those people which is his choice that's his his choice and there's nothing wrong with that because country of Malawi has been very very open-hearted to us the government of Malawi considers us to be true Christians the government of Malawi has been has been very thankful to us and uh, we have now completely reformed all that was there people are now having regular tithing so they already have some funds that they can count on in their future activities and we want to do the same in Kenya now since this happened in Kenya and Daniel is here from Tanzania I want to inform both Daniel and all of you that I have I have made a decision, isn't that, isn't that a Philadelphian way of ruling? Fine, it is, but I'm not a dictator, you know, I make decisions hopefully based on justice and, and truth, not based on my own preference of this, that and the other. I've, I've named our representative to be John Ovak. John Ovak is a very decent, well-educated, well-mannered man who is a family person. John Ovak uh, did not build any church building in Africa, he's got about six others with whom he gets on a regular basis on the Sabbath. Um, he never asked for money. He planted a garden to be for his children and his wife and himself. He planted a garden so that he would resolve the hunger issue. The only thing that he asked me if I could provide some seeds that uh, uh, he could not find on the Kenyan market, which is fine. And uh, Terry Nelson will go to Africa very soon. So hopefully Terry Nelson will bring some seats with him or uh, will find or provide means to for John to get it. So uh, he asked for the right thing. 
Uh, John Owek also was ordained a first a deacon, later a minister. In fact, John Owek used to be a overseeing a churches in Tanzania and Kenya. Uh, which exactly churches, I don't know. Don't ask me that. You'll ask that John Owek, when John Owek is among us, or when you get in touch with him. Uh, John Owek is uh, a man who in 2017, when I returned to Serbia, alerted me to the fact that uh, Evan Sochieng and his son Braddox actually participated in Kenyan elections and the same offense they repeated in 2022 for which we have gathered all the all the proofs and fine somebody is going to tell them or they're going to hear from this fine uh, we have all the proofs about the claims that we have made about certain people so we did not make any unfounded uh, accusation against the against the ministers or against the uh, the servants of the congregations we have proven and backed up all of our all of our knowledge with appropriate documents all those documents were were basically uh, dismissed by bob thiel as something irrelevant as something that uh, as a tail bearing as this that and the other so fine that's his choice and we're not going to be wasting our time anymore with with scammers and those in Kenya who have done great damage to the uh, great damage to the work of God, anyway. Uh, what? So with John Ovak, we have so we have John Ovak and six people. Also, there is a Common Faith Academy, as it is called, uh, by some people, and there is a Church of God International. Uh, Robert, I can't remember now his last name, who is in Kenya, and in cooperation with some people in America and Australia. Uh, the man from Australia came in touch with me, got in touch, and asked me about the. Um, he asked me about my experiences in Africa because he read in Church of God news that I was in Africa. I was very honest about him, and he said that my testimony has helped him even resolve. Uh, this board of directors and this Common Faith Academy has the uh, as a goal to educate the Kenyan leaders in the basic uh, basic. Uh, biblical doctrines and that's what that academy would serve for originally as i'm informed uh, both terry and i were contacted by the man from australia tom kiley uh, tom kiley is uh, basically part of those both of the directors and uh, he cooperates with this man robert robert from cgi in in kenya the common idea is to root out all of those scammers and all of those uh, all of those bad churches the idea also is that uh, all who are genuine churches of God, since the Kenyan law is being changed, that all of them, they could possibly be registered as a Church of God network, and then they would be certified to operate in Kenya. Why is the Kenyan government changing its laws, its religious laws? Because somebody explained to me, it was John Ovak, that there was a an idiot, one of the idiots. Uh, it's incredible how, man, how much... E idiocy and, and stupidity can be found in one nation but Kenya is Kenya is really a case in point it's really a, a exceptional case that you can just you just stop and you just wonder what in the world is happening there somebody uh, under the pretext of Christianity and Christian religion somebody not a Church of God leader but somebody from whatever religion uh, that somebody uh, lured uh, the believers into a jungle and poisoned them again under the under the uh, guise of religion. So Kenya again, uh, it just reminds me of what uh, what was that what happened in Guyana back in the last century. I can't remember the Jim Jones, right? Jim Jones, what he did. Anyway, this happened recently in Kenya, and the Kenyan government was very upset and alerted. So the Kenyan government decided to change the rules, and therefore Kenyan government decided to. Uh, issue certificate only to those people who have clean hands good you know good kind of morale and people who are theologically educated now john ovak uh, i went through ambassador college but i didn't finish it because the apostasy came in 1995 when i was in my third year uh, and i we asked tom Kelly, Kelly, if we could uh, i said if terry could go through that course as well as john ovak as well as myself um and um Tom said that's okay, so we'll see if we could all, because Terry is our man 
who is coordinating things in Africa. So in case that we need to have a certificate, if some of us are in Kenya and the drone is in Kenya, that would be secured. However, uh, I was informed by this uh, Common Faith Academy that uh, originally CCOG leaders were supposed to be in call, involved in that program. But the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the leaders of that academy had a meeting, Zoom meeting, in which they decided, I'm informed, that they are not going to involve CCOG anymore because Bob Thiel is a prophet and he made some wrong prophecies. I'm not sure what wrong prophecies. I have to tell you, I never knew really what wrong, what, what, what's wrong, what was wrong in his prophetic, in his prophetic work. And I, it doesn't, doesn't, I don't care. But that is how I was informed. So that means that CCOG is already excluded from that future. Uh, Church of God network that will be certified and registered uh, with the Kenyan government. Uh, and as, since Evans doesn't have any 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 education anyway, theological education, uh, God knows what only happened to them. But that's their that's their problem. It's not ours. As for us, we were told that we can go through that process, through that school. Uh, and then the uh, that Robert man from Kenya asked me for John Ovex. Uh, contact details he wanted to get in touch with john which is okay john was kind of a bit upset oh but brother you know i said john just calm down you know calm down there is nothing wrong i said john we are not politicians terry and i we are your brethren and therefore since we're your brethren we are not going to be kind of uh, uh doing anything wrong uh, i explained to him look this is noble you would need to have certificate anyway because you're in Kenya, so you, there is nothing you can lose. Plus, there have been, of course, various other individuals who have been now attacking John Ovak and trying to instill uh, lack of confidence that we have no confidence in John Ovak. They've been trying to work on Terry. They keep forgetting that Terry is not a sucker. They just cannot get that once for all. They and uh, you know, with me, they know all the, what it is. I told them. I'm I'm here, the head of the Hope of Israel, and I'm going to make decisions, and they can only, you know, uh, they, they have nothing to do with that. And I told them that, you know, they've already lost credibility with many people, and that I'm not going to be influenced by whatever their cries and whatever their words would be. I was very clear with that, brethren, and I'm still clear with that. But they keep thinking that they keep thinking wrongly. <laughs> that Terry is kind of softer, so perhaps you know they could work on Terry. That's their wrong. That's their deception because Terry is very steady, and Terry and I share the same principles. And therefore, uh, nobody can make Terry a sucker. We have learned rich lessons from C from CCOG, from and from all the failures that CCOG made in Africa, and thus creating a monster, which they have to. Uh, which they have to now, you know, lull their child, which Bob Thiel has to lull their child, Frankenstein, that he created in Kenya, and sadly keeps financing it. That's his choice. We warned, we asked, we said what we had witnessed, we we presented all the all the uh, all the evidence we had. That's about it. We have done our duties, and once we, you know, exhausted those things, then Terry said, "I have to tell to the church," but the church, of course, installed various. Uh, censorship on him so he went to that not the most not the most flattering side band but that's okay look friends band people on the band uh, they might have wrong attitude or whatever but they were obviously abused by the hierarchical churches and uh, i said i also and we have to uh, respect that they were who knows what kind of abuse they've experienced as we have experienced abuse and false uh, accusations here we don't know what the others uh, experienced in the old WCG in all these various other churches of God whose hierarchies are very often very abusive anyway and prone to lying as we know and therefore since we don't know what those people's experiences are we're not going to judge them but band was the you know it's a worldwide site that has access to all the people have access to that so people can get informed about the things that uh, CCOG will censor us on and that's okay. Uh, I I'm trying to be very moderate in my posts there if I try sometimes and I appealed since the very my since my first very involvement I said please just if you could not <coughs> speak. 
too much evil of Bob Thiel, especially his wife, especially his his child David, who is who has a Down syndrome. So uh, you know, but you know, I cannot. You know, people keep forgetting one thing, and that's that's the whole problem. You know, brethren, I cannot be a police who can control what people can say and will not say. When we were in that back in you know, that CCOG forum, you know, some people kind of uh, basically felt that I should have done this, that, and the other. Brethren, I cannot. I cannot control you. I'm not here to control your life. You know, I'm here to be helper of your joy. I cannot control your life. I cannot control. How could I know what is, <coughs> what are you doing in your homes? What are you doing? And if you want to say something that is wrong, how can I prevent you? I'm not a policeman that can prevent you. That's why we have the judge, judge. The judge above us is Jesus Christ. We have the judge. We have the mediator between us and God. Again, Jesus Christ. And therefore, that's all that we need to know. I cannot prevent somebody from saying something. If, if somebody is determined to do something wrong, there is nothing I can do about it. You know. Could I, was I able to prevent Bob Thiel from making mistakes, constant mistakes in Africa? No, I wasn't. Terry wasn't. So please just don't look at me as if, you know, CCOG members, incredible. Uh, they've tried to send, as I told you, all the messages to our members here in Serbia. And I told you already, members in Serbia, brethren, are not little sheep and dumb sheep that listen to Sasha. Members in Serbia have their own mind. They've got their own determination. And I just mentioned to you, they themselves, by their own initiative, found out that the famous evangelist in Africa has four Facebook accounts with different years on them, years of his birth. They've discovered it. I had no clue about it. Which means, but they, you know, some of these people think that, you know, uh, they think that, well, they think that they're just my little minions, so they try to say. And, and, and there is one thing that the church members in Serbia all told me, all unanimously, those people worship men. They worship Bob Thiel. They're obsessed with Bob Thiel. Wrong, brethren. None of you must be obsessed with me or with Terry or with anybody else. Stop trusting in men. The middle verse in the Bible says, Curse is the one who relies upon a man. These people, they, the church members tell me here in Serbia, they just count to consider whatever I hear from Bob Thiel, whatever he says, whatever. They're just obsessed with him. They just worship him. And that's understandable because many of those people have never been affiliated earlier with the Church of God. They've got no idea about our history the last 30 years and so on and so forth. But you must never worship a man. And I'll be very unhappy if I hear that some of you would do it. Be that me or be that somebody else. It's wrong, brethren. We are all followers of Christ. Our mediator between us and God of Israel, whom we are all to worship. And uh, I was very much, I have to say, last last week as I was giving you the, uh, the uh, I referred to that person in, in, a, in a message. But I was really, I was really amazed to read that one of our members heard that um, I've, that I, from a CCOG member yet, that I have made, rid, uh, 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 not ridiculous, but the uh, mocking, mocking posts about CCOG, which is clearly evident that I have no love. Brethren, I really challenge everybody. If saying the truth is mocking, I was fine. I've told you the truth all, and uh, Terry and I, and Andre and I, and, and, and Randy, we have just told you the truth with our experience we all had. If telling the truth is mocking posts, fine. But uh, I'm not the one. I'm the last one who likes to mock people. In fact, I, 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 you know, we could. People on the band, yes, people on the band do it. I've noticed that. But again, it's their choice, brethren. I cannot prevent them from saying that. I cannot prevent them from calling Bob Thiel egoistical, from telling that he just doesn't listen to anybody else, from telling that he's calling him mockingly savior of Africa and 100 Caucasians. That's that's what people they people just have their freedom of expression to say whatever, however wrong it is. But I did not participate in that. 
I only intervened on that site if I had to say something, something perhaps correct, something and so on. And once again, I told everybody else because there was a speculation, you know, oh, perhaps Randy was the one who put, who uh, influenced the uh, formation of the Hope of Israel. No, Randy was not the one. Randy was the one with me five, in 2018 as we thought, well, let's, can we, because Randy said, your, your, your messages are so good, they should be heard more widely he said um, he said to me uh, uh, what can we do i thought well i said the radio would be the best or some kind of a radio i said i don't want to have any video stuff because i'm sick and tired of tv and obsession with video things all of our world is obsessed with with visual have you noticed that i don't want it i said i want to be in a radio style so can we have a perhaps a youtube channel where we can post those messages a radio would be the best and really in 2018 here comes the radio radio how can we name the radio i said hope of israel worldwide there it was and randy just randy just implemented that and we were shocked uh, positively from uh, the first month of the radio being in operation including the youtube youtube channel hope of israel worldwide we we're shocked that for month after month after month the increase in statistics the outreach were amazing Last night there was now there were people listening to our radio in Israel, Latvia, and Slovenia. Now I challenge you to tell me when in the world did you last hear heard that anything in those three countries related to the biblical history preached by the Church of God reached people in Israel, Latvia, and Slovenia? Last night, as we chatted, it was Friday night. We had three listeners or three or more listeners in those three countries, brethren. So it was amazing. It was always amazed us. You know, one month it would be the leading country for listening was East Europe. It was Romania and so on. The other month it would be Sierra Leone in Africa. The other month it was all of a sudden somebody showed up from Taiwan. The other month, oh, look, we had an, somebody listened to us in Iceland. In Iceland. 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 Reykjavik uh, being the capital. Um, the other month, oh, uh, capital of Albania, Tirana, somebody listens, I don't know, somebody listens for how many hours, it doesn't matter. Brethren, I'm not boasting, I'm just telling you the truth. And I don't want to mock anyone any, at any time, I'm not that kind of person. I was mocked when I was in this world, I was mocked in school, I was mocked by my own father, I was mocked by all kinds of people, and I know how, how awful that is, so I didn't mock anybody. But obviously, a certain person whose name, oh, certain person who is now doing a radio broadcast because he has a very nice voice. He was my, by the way, I suggested him once to Bob Thiel. And I said, you know, he has a nice voice. He would be, he was also involved with music and stuff. He would be, yes, that person is there. That person wrote to one of our members in Serbia. There is a clear evidence that I have no love because I've made mocking posts about CCOG. Rubbish. He has just shown to me that he has no discernment at all. And he has shown to me again the problem that some people think that the minister or the elder's duty is. Brethren, my duty is not to control your life. My duty is to be helper of your joy. If you approach me to ask me what the Bible says about something, my duty is to hear you. My duty is to give you a certain advice if I have it. If I don't, I can ask the advisory council. If we don't, we can all pray about something. We're not all-knowing, almighty. And let alone, I'm not a policeman who can police what people write, what people think, and what people write on internet or even on that in the past on the CCOG forum when they wrote all kinds of stupid heresies and rubbish. Anyway, so me, and I'm in a very unenviable position, I have to tell you, because I never thought that I would have to be, but you know, what could we do? We faced various problems in our former affiliation and people looked up to me as an elder because, you know, they looked up to me to make a resolution. Now, I don't know what resolution you would make, but I knew one thing that I could not be in association with witchcraft practitioners and those who consult witches. I could not, brethren, because it's a curse. And I don't want you and your children to be cursed. I don't want us to be cursed here in Serbia. So my decision was that we are going to leave if something does not change. We're going to leave. And we left. And that was my decision. It was one man decision if you want. If the, for those who think that Philadelphia government is one man, one man show. No, it's not. 
Mr. Armstrong was never a one-man show. Mr. Armstrong was a very sharing individual. Mr. Armstrong liked to delegate, delegate the duties, and Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Armstrong uh, would 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 uh, communicate with people of all walks of life. So now, with having advisory council, we can, uh, as Terry, I think Terry said, made a comment. Yes, the work of God will be mighty. It will be mighty. Yes, in the advisory council I've given on this on this group in Skype, I've given you explanation why I chose those particular individuals. I've made I've made sure to choose people who are service oriented, people who are not afraid to sacrifice for the sake of uh, of God's work, people who have proven to me that they're honest, truthful, people who are extraordinarily zealous, like Andre Nelson is, and I've chosen those seven people. One lady is among them. We would have more ladies, but uh, anyway, originally we had Teresa Juarez, but she decided that this was not fellowship for her. Okay. Uh, not because something wrong happened to her, but she just she just said she prayed and she decided she should stay where she is. Okay, we honor that, of course. Uh, I, the only lady there is our music star. It is Sharon Pass, a wonderful example of a lady. And I tell you, and all those people who are also Jamie Jamie Storham, who has shown his amazing dedication, his amazing. Um, What's the word for that? His amazing understanding of the prophecies and so on. Who was very zealous even before his baptism. And uh, after his baptism, he talked to me several times. And I could just see how his thinking matures. How his thinking is uh, very selfless and so on. And we are happy. I was the one, yes. I'm the one who ordered to the treasurer. In the former affiliation, we didn't have a treasurer. Do you realize that, brethren? Do you think about it? It was my order to the treasurer that various incomes that we had, little that we had, that we sent to Australia so that we would not allow Jamie, Jamie to go bankrupt, not with his own doing, but because his car was, former car was having problems. And, 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 and the life in Australia was the nation of a happy, was a country of happy people. The nation of Australia is sinking deeper and deeper, brethren. The prices of food are, 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 are amazing. It's crime against humanity. The prices of housing is terrible. They don't have enough housing anyway. The government decided recently to raise whatever. Thanks to all these landlords can now raise the, the, the rent to incredible heights. Jamie is a tenant, so am I, and I know what kind of, what kind of uh, anguish that is. And, you know, I expect all over, all over this Anglo-Saxon world the same anguish will come. How will we do with that? I don't know. I keep praying that all of us here in Serbia and elsewhere will be able to rescue you. And we will do our best, brethren. We will not let you, we will not let you starve to death or whatever. But we understand the beast is coming up. The 666 system is coming up. We'll face who knows how many other things. But anyway. With the advisory council, I'll be making all the best decisions that I can in the interest of all the church members. That's what I'm committed to do. That's what I want to do. And one thing that I want to see is reversal of this further fragmentation and, 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 and scattering and division of God's people enough. That's why I'm so happy that all those various churches in Kenya with various leaders who might be going through the school from that Common Faith Academy, they'll be having perhaps one unified uh, organization in a sense umbrella organization through which they will be certified with the Kenyan government and I explained to John Ovak John seemed to be so upset all of a sudden I said to John first of all because you know he keeps fearing he's being attacked now by all these various other scammers and he now feels I don't know John I said first of all nobody can take your position I appointed you as our our, our, our representative in Africa and not in Africa but in Kenya one day he might be even for Africa because he, he does have a qualities of a very good leader. He's a very pleasant fellow and uh, I had very, 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 very good experiences with him. And I knew that the moment I appoint him, I knew that all those cameras will be terribly upset because he knows them very well. Among other things, he revealed to me how they go to 
internet cafe and uh, search online for various churches that are not present in Kenya and then they're trying to scam them and use them for money just one of their manipulations just for all of you in the West to hear about it uh, and that you do not think that we uh, no, I don't have any any particular uh, pick on Kenya I'm just saying that what's happening in Kenya and all the things happening in Kenya are so amazing that <laughs> you just you can just stay totally totally taken by surprise that that kind of uh, frame of mind even exists. The frame of mind that is capable of all kind of tricks and stuff, trying to trick us, but no, 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 again, they have forgotten yet that Terry is not a sucker, and Terry is not another. As I said to Bob, I said, Bob, uh, not to Bob, to, uh, to, to John, to John Olvac, I said, John, uh, the era of Bob Thiel is over. We're not suckers, and nobody can hear I, we trust you. If something you detect that it is wrong with all of that, you'll tell us and we can just pull out. But we trust you. We are not distrustful. We are not politicians. Because he keeps writing, oh, you know, may God bless his work. May God keep us faithful to the kingdom. May God, he writes the, right, he writes the things that are just absolutely fine. And in accordance with God's word. But his experience is so bad that he feels like that somebody may just deceive us about him. And we will say, John, don't worry about that. Because I told him that this man in Kenya who wants runs that, among other things, the Common Academy uh, thing, that he wants to talk to him and get in touch directly with him. And John all of a sudden, oh, you know, we don't want somebody to manipulate us. We don't want John. Nobody can manipulate us. We are not suckers. The era of Bob Thiel and his way of governance, as he sees it, is over. We are going to, we trust you, and because I trust you, I have confidence in you. I, you know, if you've discovered something is wrong there, don't worry, we'll just pull out, and nobody can, nobody can, 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 can uh, change my mind about you, except you yourself, and everything is fine. He also cried to me and Terry how all of these others are just telling this. that I said, John, it is expected, John. You're better than them. You're a nice, educated, well-mannered man with the wonderful qualities. I tell you, brethren, he has a qualities even. Then I could see him being a representative of the whole of Africa one of these days. But that's, that's my opinion. It doesn't mean that it, that's what God wants. So we'll just wait for God's, for God's will to be you know, displayed to us. And uh, I said, it's expected that they, they, just, they just hate you. And I said, I can't spare you from that, John. What lies they talk about me? Well, what should Terry say? Terry was, was, was declared an enemy of God's work. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Andre was told that he cannot be a possibly Philadelphian and so on and I can just keep now going on and on tell you about all the lies they're telling fine that's their choice but I said John I can't spare you from those it's expected that they would hate you persecute you and ask and speak all kind of all kinds of malignant words about you it is expected John you have to endure that's part of your walk of life and that's what it is and so in Kenya, don't worry, not everything is lost. We do have a representative for Kenya named John Ovek. And we have a man who has good experience with Tanzania, with Kenya. He's the honest person as far as I know. He's not trying to use us. He even told me once, oh, perhaps you want to use me to get registered. I said, no, John, we don't want to use you. We are not Satan who uses people and, there's, and there's discards them. We are just God's people and we want to see to go on with you, marching to the kingdom. And we want to have people in Kenya and in Africa that we can trust. And that's the, 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 the greatest challenge that I had in Kenya and Terry had in Kenya was that we did not know whom we can trust. And uh, this even man from Australia, Tom Coeli, who is in charge of that academy and part of that movement to root out scammers in Kenya, um, root out from that common organization they're going to register. 
Tom Quill wrote to me, well, when you say it will be frustrated, it's an understatement. I said, I know. I know it's an understatement because I said, I don't know how, with what words, what words can I use to explain to you how these people operate, what they're capable of doing just to get money. And, you know, anyway. So I said, I don't know, but I said, uh, all that I know, all that I knew, I told you. He phoned Terry Nelson. They had about 40 minutes of conversation and so anyway he could you know he could know that we are true the rain thankfully has started in Serbia brethren we were having a heat wave which killed several people in the region not the heat well the heat wave more or less but then there came a storm all of a sudden and this colder air mixed with the hotter air so in the region in Slovenia in Croatia Croatia several people died because the uh, storm came and the, uh, the the trees fell over and stuff like that. Thankfully, in my town here, it's only rain without much lightning. I could hear them in the background, but not that bad. The rain is coming because we had a horrible heat with incredible things happening to us. Our summers are getting hotter. The temperatures are not what we in Europe are used to. So it's a great challenge uh, to stay you know to stay safe let let the trial my trial at my trial now let me tell you what the trial i have for example which i don't think any of you may have it and you may think oh just to illustrate to you the range of trials people may have that you don't even think about my refrigerator is too small i have a very old very very old refrigerator that was old and, and being in a cellar of my friends and then they said well you know it's an old refrigerator but it works you know and you don't have refrigerator so let's let's have this one i do but it's too small and not all the food that i have can stay there and because of the terribly hot days some of the food for me just just went rotten And since my cats, my cats that I have their carnivores, some of the meat that I couldn't fit into the refrigerator also got rotten. So I found, and even some food that was in the refrigerator, the refrigerator is so old that even that food that stayed there was kind of went kind of bad anyway. Which is very sad. But that's my trial, for example. You do, do not even know what kind of trials can come to God's people anyway. So my trial is small refrigerator, you know. Oh yes, there are some bigger ones on sale, but don't ask me how much they cost and all of the other things. In any case, just wanted to give you this kind of uh, <laughs> introduction, if you wish. And my topic was close community, a defense from drifting, if you don't mind. Because brethren, this life, as you all know, can be all very overwhelming and uh, it's so easy to put what we have to do spiritually on hold or even let it drive out everything we value most you know we need to renew our commitment daily to become a living sacrifice not on a superficial level but to dig deep down you know to uncover those things we must really be overcoming we cannot do it alone we need each one for one simple fact we don't know ourselves and again that was again uh, one of the reasons why I named the Advisory Council yesterday you know we drift and we take tangents and we can't see it happening in real time we get caught up inside our own head remember the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and finding our way out is next to impossible without some help we are the easiest person to fool because i've just quoted jeremiah 79 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it and because of this fact, we don't know when we drift. You know, the pools of this world water down our engagement and compromises our commitment to this way of life. And so, as it happens to all of us, we drift. We tend to drift away from God, from what God wants for us. Locked inside of our own heads, we rationalize those things that we should be doing and consequently we generate thinking that suits our situation our temperament or our comfort zone everything is in, everything important in our life brethren is uphill in other words we have to work at it you know a good relationship is an, is is uphill it doesn't just happen 
We don't drift into discipline. You know, we don't drift into the fruits of the Spirit, do we? We don't drift into prayer and Bible study. We don't drift into good health and exercise. These things require efforts. The second law of thermodynamics states that in a closed or isolated system, entropy increases over time. That is to say, we tend to go downhill if left to ourselves. We don't get better without input, without outside help. Again, I'm just telling you, that's all reasons why I appointed an advisory council. I'm in touch with all those people anyway. I'm in touch with all of you anyway, with listening to your input anyway. But, you know, now we have a formal advisory council, just the way it was at the time of Mr. Armstrong, so fine. If that was the government of God back in those days, it will be the proper governance. It can be the proper governance in our days. But, you know, my vision of the government of God is that the government of God rules from the top down in love and that the government of God does it with the uh, best interest on mind for those being governed, no matter where they are, whether they live in Africa or in Asia or in Scandinavia or wherever, or in the Antarctic for that reason, which is, by the way, uninhabited area. So, I'm not against the government of God. I'm just against the... Uh, I'm just against the stupidities being done under the guise of the government of God. And there were people who were abusing their positions in the past. There are people we have seen recently who just have all kinds of silly, silly ideas and explanations for why they do this, that, and the other. Now, in our council, of, well, in our advisory council, we do have both deacons in Serbia. We have our treasurer, Randy. We have, we have Sharon, the music star. We have Terry, who has done so much good in Africa, reforming the, uh, the, 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 the bad way. I mean, the government of God, which did not instill tithing system in Africa. You are, I am asking you what kind of government of God that is. Brethren, I just want you to use common sense. I constantly keep appealing to church members to use common sense. And you cannot, you cannot worship a man to the point that you don't see his his bad, bad, bad points. And if even if he were a prophet, which I don't think he is, but even if he were, the same regulations and rules in the Bible apply to him as they apply to all the other members. And to him perhaps even more, because if God gifted him with that gift, even more applies to him to show by his example those regulations. The example was that we had was 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 haughtiness and pride and my last warning to that person was that pride comes before the fall and that's all that I had to say but his minions from Africa continue to display that pride first trying to drive uh, a wedge between me and Terry trying to tell that Terry was such an evil person that I could not trust Terry and that you know, how could I believe what's going on in Africa? Because we, I heard it from that evil Terry, you know. Of course, it, it didn't work. And it will not work. So that's what Satan always does, you know. We notice here in Serbia as well. The pressure, the pressure is there that we just uh, divide up among ourselves, that we start mistrusting one another. And that we would just eventually be scattered and that this voice that speaks his Serbian language calling constantly the Serbian nation to repentance, that that voice would die, brethren. That's what Satan wants. And again, everything important in our life is uphill. Our commitment can be strengthened. We, we are better when we are connected to each other. You know... We don't get better without input, without outside help, and closed, any closed system deteriorates over time. The problem we had in the past, among other things, I tried to integrate Africa into the wider community. Never worked, because they never allowed themselves to be integrated into the wider community. They constantly kept ignoring me. Perhaps afraid that I'll discover something that's wrong there. But just by the fact that they were ignoring us and not being there, or discovered that something is wrong with them anyway. Stupid as somebody would think otherwise. 
And then, after Terry came back from his second visit, I think, he presented to me all kinds of things. What was what was wrong? And his son was very cooperative as well. He was very perfectly uh, submitted to the government of God. Because to me as an elder, he would just give me various observations, various things, and I would always tell him, look, you know, do this or do the other and so on. And he did it. And somebody will tell me we don't have a proper Philadelphia governance, really. What is a proper Philadelphia governance, you know? To send thousands of, 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 of dollars to a, to a criminal to buy a new car. What was wrong with his old car? I don't know. But a new, better car. And then he goes around and then and, 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 and he says how much money he got. Oh, yes. And the our friend Forrester revealed to me last Sabbath, was it? How he goes around telling people that Hope of Israel is a poor church. Don't go there. You know, but, you know, church, continue to go. It's a rich church. You're, you're to stay here. I said to, I said to Forrester, that's beautiful. It's true. We are poor church. Yes, indeed, we are. Financially, we are poor, but I hope in, with the fruits of the Spirit that will be very much abundant and exceeding. And I said, it's a wonderful reputation. We're poor, so all those scammers who don't care about the truth will not come with us. And all those others who are now boasting how their people are returning to them, I'm like, yes, please, they are. Keep them. They're returning to you because they thought that by flattery, and uh, and telling us how dedicated they are, how much they are for the hope of Israel. They thought that Terry and I would just fall, fall on our on our backs on our knees, and we'll be so happy. No, we don't care about the numbers. We care about the quality, not the quantity. So I'm like, good. Let them. They're returning to you. Wonderful. They obviously didn't didn't find any benefits for themselves in hope of Israel, and they will never find those benefits because we're a poor church after all. But keep them, keep them with you, you know, keep them with you because, yeah, sure, you're about the numbers. You don't care about the quality of people. Fine. For years, brethren, I was trying to raise the awareness that we need to find out and check out what those people believe, what is there, what are their misconceptions, whether they understand the Bible prophecy, which is the area where they least understand anything, whether they understand about the beast coming up and stuff like that and stuff like that. And... Uh, And I was ignored. Fine. I don't want to be in a association with ignorant people. With ignorant people who, by some reports, don't even know what holidays are in the Bible. I don't want to be with ignorant people who don't understand basic things about the prophets. You don't have to understand all the details, but basic things you have to understand, brethren. Or how can you watch... Watch and be watch and be vigilant, you know. As Jesus Christ told us, watch and be vigilant. How can you be be vigilant if you have no idea what are the basic prophecies in the Bible? Speaking of that, speaking of that, this week the Czech Minister for European Integration announced the need he felt for a federalized Europe and that it should be called listen to this one now. United States of Europe. Oh my. Oh my. That rang the bell right away with me. How did it ring the bell? Well, it rang the bell because I remember that somebody in the last century used to say that one of these days this European state will be called the United States of Europe. That man was Herbert Armstrong. How did he know it? Well, obviously there was a revelation from God. Which means that if he knew it and then it's showing up to be true, then it means we're on the right track, brethren. That it means we are the we have succeeded the right man. United States of Europe. And you will hear me very often referring to Europe as United States of Europe. In fact, from one of my interviews with Gene Porter, Jamie even found an, uh, an excerpt and he recently just excerpted it from the and you can hear my voice saying United States of Europe brethren that's why very encouraging United States of Europe now the quest for federalized Europe was already 
initiated by Germany. France keeps pushing for formation of the European army. And now we have the Czech Minister of European Integration lobbying for the United States of Europe. So I was asked, you know, I'll be asking, I'll be asking so many times that understanding of church members in Africa should be should be checked, and that they should be provided with teachings on the topics that they did not understand. Even though one has to ask himself whether they understand anything, because many of their leaders and they themselves seem to be very carnal. I'm speaking about Kenya, Kenya in particular, because all the trouble we had came from that country and all these all, all from that country or related to that country anyway so fortunately overcoming in our spiritual life we have not been called to do it all alone we were called into ecclesia into a community but communities are unpredictable brethren and sometimes they get off script we could see that but they can also be encouraging and uplifting you know the church was never meant to be a country club for people who have it all together or none of us would be members no it is for broken people who have been called by god to a life and to a whole bigger than we are each year we celebrate that life and that hope of course through god's holidays Hope, yes, the hope of Israel. Each year we celebrate through God's holidays, which God gave even back to Israel as a sign between himself and his people and to tell his people to keep them in reminder of what is his plan to save humanity as a whole. Now, getting comfortable with this, you know, that God is building a family, getting comfortable with this has always been an issue for the church because we like to distance ourselves from people who we feel haven't grown as much as we have so that nobody might think that we are we have anything to do that we are anything like them but if we could only see ourselves we would see that we have different but just as deep seated problems that they appear to have to have you know brethren we all drift so how do we solve this problem hebrews chapter 3 Beginning verse 12, Hebrews 3, 12. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now, Paul is saying that each and every one of us has the capacity to turn away from the living God. And he's pointing out that we tend to drift away from God. We tend to say no to God. Then he describes a heart issue. <laughs> the heart that turns away from God begins, you know, it all begins with heart. And it all begins within, within, in the heart. We begin to drift because of something going on inside of us. It starts small, a temptation, a dissatisfaction, a doubt, a question. Oh, I'm not sure about that anymore. Oh, I'm getting really tired of this. Oh, this is boring. This is what goes on inside our heads. And nobody has access to you unless you let people in. So nobody knows that is, uh, you know, going on. And uh, nobody knows that uh, that is going on in your mind. The only way anyone is going to know about our sinning, unbelieving heart that turns away from God is if we are or if we are in a relationship where people have access to us, when we have intimate relationships with others, we pretty well know when something is going on. So if we don't have those kinds of relationships with others, we are going to struggle alone. Verse 13, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The word encourage you find here, or in some translation means to comfort, appeal to, exhort, urge, strongly entreat, or beg with the idea of strengthening one another. One of the main themes of Hebrews, of the book of Hebrews, is indeed to strengthen our faith and commitment to avoid the deceitfulness of sin. The author of Hebrews understands how Satan works, so in our defense against Satan's deceitfulness, we are asked to encourage each other. It says even daily, it means ongoing, not once in a lifetime. 
Because brethren, this is about relationships. You have access to people and they have access to you. And this is a key point. You have to have a relationship with someone to do this because you don't walk up to a stranger and begin, you know, <laughs> and begin to exhort them. No, that doesn't feel like concern. That feels like judgment. And God adds in Scripture, as long as it is called today. So he's placing some urgency on uh, this because the time is short. He's saying that we live in an age where we need this daily. Satan is always at work. And this physical life tugs at us. It overwhelms us. It discourages us. It deceives us. So we need to be in each other's lives. Now he's saying, I want you to be in each other's lives. I want you to know what is going on. To notice when they drift, when they begin to drift. I want you to notice when they don't show up, when their attitude goes sour. I want you to be in their lives enough or to the extent that you can say something, you know. No one should ever have to struggle alone with something nobody knows about. We need to make sure that someone has access and permission to say something to us. And how different might your life have been if you were in a relationship with people who had permission to say, hey, 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 I've noticed something. Are you okay? Well, then the author writes, why? He says, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So here is what we have to avoid. A sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God or a mind that is hardened by sin's deceitfulness. A, per a person that cannot be told a person that cannot learn. Rather, sin deceives us. It is not just an event. It resides inside us and it deceives us and we have to understand this and its uncomfortable implications. You know, we talk ourselves into stupid thinking and we don't even know we are doing it. It seems totally reasonable, you know, because it's coming from inside of us. We're not alone in there. There is a battle going on here with an adversary that seeks to destroy us. We need outside help. Sometimes we think, oh, I deserve it. I'm forced to do this. Who would blame me for doing this? And I would be happier if only. And whatever it is. And we start to believe the stupid things we say to, other, to ourselves. We plant seeds that grow into uh, thoughts and actions that turn away us away from the li from the living God. The drift begins within us. So Paul is saying, guess what? The best defense is not you. The best defense in all of us together what you what have you begin began to tell yourselves what have you begun to tell yourselves these days what is the thought that is growing within you every time they say that every time you see her every time you think I'm tired of this I don't think I believe that anymore why am I doing this? Most of us don't tell anyone else what we are thinking because they would think we have lost our minds. That is the most self-destructive thing I can think of, brethren. You're hurting yourself. You're not thinking straight. The power of this is when we get these things out, we say them to another person or persons and they begin to repeat them back. We begin to see it differently and yes they might think you know you're crazy but uh, they might keep you from from crazy they may save your life 
what if someone had been there for you years ago? What if you had given access or permission to, you know, uh, what did I say, access or, permi uh, access or permission uh, to someone years ago? What might you have avoided? This is the power of community. So Paul is saying that if you will allow someone in while you are in your life, while it is still a seed, while it is still in your heart, it will keep you from sinning and keep you from drifting indeed. We serve each other as guardians, I guess. One of the reasons we hesitate to do this, of course, it is because we don't like being judged or gossiped about. If we are judged, judging others it is because we don't really understand Satan we don't really understand sin and we forget what was highlighted earlier in the story of Cain and Abel God told Cain in Genesis 4 he told him sin lies at the door And uh, sin lies at the door that applies to each and every one of us. We are in no position to judge. Where someone else is crazy in one area, I'm crazy in another. Then he completes the thought in verse 14 with us. We have come to share in Christ. If indeed... We uphold, we hold our spiritual conviction firmly till the very ground. If we told, you know, if we told unto our original conviction, we share a common goal, a common com commitment by not drifting into deceit and unbelief. Well, it is that little thought that begins within that causes us to drift it is that little thing that makes its way into our marriage that makes its way into our beliefs that makes its way into finances that makes its way into our relationship with God and if it is left un unchecked then Anyway, if uh, it is left unchecked, it leads to unbelief out there. It leads to sin, brethren. It leads to a hard heart. Now, one area of drift can undermine everything. One thing can lead you to the place where you don't believe anything. When we begin to do the things we should not be doing, when we decide it's time for divorce, when you meet the girl you should shouldn't be dating, when anyway, one area of drift can undermine everything, but When we begin to do things that we shouldn't be doing, when we decide it's time for divorce, when you meet the girl you shouldn't be dating, when you stop observing the holidays, it's not because you don't believe in God anymore, but after you just justify the things you do, now you begin to not believe in God and everything he says in his word. But it starts off as a little thing, you know, a little thought that has just now impacted everything you believed, everything you originally committed to. And the way... You stop the way you avoid being tricked by the deceitfulness of sin is being in a relationship where someone has the permission to speak to you. Satan is working on us continually. Hebrews is asking us to be exhorted by one another daily because Satan is working on us. If he can get us thinking in the wrong direction it has the potential to undermine everything, to take us away from God. We lose what we have, what we have come to share in Christ bit 
my bit. We never intended to give the whole thing up, and we won't if we are praying and paying attention to uh, the little things. And the way we pay attention to the little things is by allowing someone in. If we don't pay attention to the little things, then they will cost us everything. You know, we are being instructed to see one another on a regular basis so that none of us is tricked by the sin that dwells within us and thereby drift away from the faith. We are told to get into each other's business if you want. Of course, this is scary. Because you, you know, do you recoil when someone talks to your children or talks to you even? Do you feel like they have no business? Are you afraid of feedback? It is scary because we are so good at doing this in a self-righteous way with each other and not so adept at doing it in hey. In hey, I'm just like you kind of a way. We have all watched someone else make a bad decision. It is so obvious. We cannot see it in ourselves, as Jeremiah said. We fool ourselves. But the point here in Hebrews is that there are, there is someone here, right here, right here, uh, right now, who can easily see what you can't see in your own life. And you will either give them access or you will not give them access. So to avoid the drift, we have to keep in mind that to avoid the drift, someone must have access, the permission to appeal, exhort, implore, and if need, to beg. Well, who has access to you, brethren? Who is there to keep you from drifting? Who has permission to say something to you? If overcoming is our goal in an effort to become more like Christ and to preach the gospel, then learning has to be our focus. We need to be investing in the lives of others and they need to be investing in us. In a truly functional community, we can be vulnerable and still know that we belong. You see, that's the power of a healthy community. Too often we see people making decisions out of their disconnectedness. Disconnected people are lacking something, you know. They are either not giving or receiving. But either way, they are not functioning in reality. Disconnected people are not connecting the dots in the way they should. They have difficulty seeing the consequences of their own behavior. They only see what they want to see. The frame things in ways that support their one-sided view of the world they inhabit. We need to work with each other, rather. It's not just old people cautioning young people either. They often can spot the things that we have grown very comfortable with. In our society... Well, uh, in our society, our focus is often on the lone hero who did something great. But when you pull the curtain back, there was someone there who helped to make it possible, you know. Our success is either improved or diminished by the people in our community, brethren. We are not taught community in our society. We should be learning it in our families, but they too few actually function at this level. This is uncomfortable. It's, a, it's mutual submission in action. Mutual submission is the most influential relation, relational dynamic there is. And it is attractive because it's inclusive, you know. It says, you matter. If we are to get this right, we all have to get uncomfortable. We, we are not the same, but we can get past this, that by focusing on as it says in verse 14, what we have come to share in common, our original conviction. Now, are we lifting up those around us? Are we investing in their success? Overcoming is not about trying to control our reactions, brethren. It's not about trying to control change what we say to one to another person but it's actually having different kinds 
of things come out of our mouth because we are different. We have become different, so our in interactions are different. This kind of growth happens in good relationships. Without good relationship, you know, we usually fail, brethren. We need God's Holy Spirit to give us the courage that we need to do this. The stakes are too high and the time is too short. Now, our will, reason and character are not enough to defeat the self. Everyone needs uh, help from the outside to exhort us, to advise us, to encourage us, to support and to support and inspire us along the way. We cannot afford to become and to be closed systems, brethren. We can't overcome the way we need to without waging a campaign against the self that include, includes input from God through His Holy Spirit and those from and those whom He has chosen to rally around us in this most important in this most important calling indeed. So we owe it to each other to ask God to help us to be the kind of people that support growth in others, the kind of people that encourages others, the kind of people that look out for each other.